fantastic. Um, and that was a tremendous demonstration of robotics. And I'm going to take us to a, a, a little bit more um, somewhat sobering at some point um, thought process about does anybody here have children who don't have access to the internet? All of us. It's important for us to have access. It's important for all of our machines that we're developing and building and for all the technologies we're making to have access to the internet. And what we're doing, and really with the help of MASA um, and, and the vision, which is really, really imp incredible, is enabling affordable access for everyone. What if we could make sure that everyone in the world had access to the internet? That access to data was available everywhere to everything? And so this is the vision, actually a mission of OneWeb, to bridge the digital divide globally by 2027. So this mission started a bit, a while back I went to Africa and I wanted to connect schools. There's a lot of schools without connectivity, about two million of them today. So I started running fiber, thinking fiber was the best thing out there. And I ran a lot of fiber. And I realized, running a lot of fiber, that it wasn't the answer. It was expensive, it was hard to run, it broke often and you had to repair it, and you couldn't bring it to everybody. So there's lots of places around the world where fiber will end. So what do we do there? How do we get that high-speed internet access to everyone? Well, this problem plagues the world. 54% has no access. Four billion people. We talked about seven billion people being connected and seven billion humans. Well, over half of them are without access. So we looked up. Rather than going down into the dirt, go up into the sky. Build a satellite system to bring internet access to the world. Now many of you, or all of you, are in communications. And you know the most important thing of communications, the starting point, is almost always spectrum. And for us, the spectrum is managed by the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union. Now fortunately, back in 1997, they had set aside a very large block of spectrum, a lot of forethought, and they put a lot of rules around it, but they set aside a very large block of spectrum for this purpose, for non-geostationary satellites to provide a bridge, a digital bridge, to bring internet access to the globe. And we acquired that spectrum. We designed and developed a technology that would follow all of the rules and gave OneWeb the priority rights to three and a half gigahertz of globally harmonized spectrum. Now in mobile networks, you think of 10 megahertz or 20 megahertz, or maybe 100 megahertz wide bandwidth. But this massive amount of bandwidth allows us to bring tremendous amounts of capacity to everyone. And I'll show you how that works. So we start with a satellite, or we start with the fiber on the ground, which is already out there. And in this case, the fiber is coming to a gateway in Egypt. It transmits this information up to the satellite. And when it hits the satellite, it comes down to the ground. And underneath a bunch of beams, or lines of beams, each beam being a different frequency, the customer, the terminal on the ground, will change frequencies, receiving and transmitting its data in that frequency. But our satellites move and the Earth moves and they all have to coordinate together. So we have actually 49 satellites in a plane at 1,200 kilometers. And initially we'll have 18 planes. The 18 planes and the nearly 900 satellites will give us complete 100% global coverage. And this is just the beginning. So we've talked about the mission and the spectrum. Then you have to have satellites, and the satellites need to be cost effective. Now most of the time satellites have been $50 million each for something like this. But we redesigned the satellites and developed an a serial production mechanism for satellites that's never been done before to bring these satellites down under a million dollars. We were shooting for $500,000 per satellite. We're just a slight bit higher. So for the first time ever, we're actually doing serial production of satellites. And this isn't a hope of something we might do in the future. This isn't just a PowerPoint slide talking about a vision. 
This is a factory in Toulouse, France, where we're producing these satellites. And factories in Florida, where we're producing space structures, and in New Mexico, building solar panels, and another factory in Florida, in Cape Canaveral, the world's largest purpose-built satellite factory, where we'll build three satellites per day. So to do this, we had to build a very highly automated factory. To get that price down and to enable tremendous amounts of capacity for everyone in the world. <clears throat> so we also had to develop new technologies with our partners. And we have a lot of partners in this. As Ma said, said you can't do this alone. So while SoftBank is a large investor, we have many other investors and governments supporting us, cheering us on for this common mission of enabling access for the globe, which will benefit all of you economically, and it will make all of the other half of the world economically relevant so that you can transact with them and bring your products to them and they can develop their own technologies and maybe sell them to you. In this case, for space structures, we work to design a, a panel. And on that panel, <clears throat> which is part of the satellite, you see these little inserts. Those inserts, which have are threaded screws, are very hard to put in. And they take 15 minutes per insert. There's 550 inserts per satellite, so it's one month's worth of work to build a satellite, just the structures. But with a partner, we developed the world's first and only insert machine where we can insert these pieces, test them, and validate them within one minute, changing the time for building a system from one, hour, from one month to three hours. So we've developed a lot of technologies. We've got the satellites in production. What does it bring you? What does it bring people? Well, our capabilities, we're going to have well over a gigabit per second. Our first phase will be 595 megabits per second. With latencies below 50 milliseconds, so it's fully LTE compliant. This can sit in the middle of your networks, and you won't have to reprogram anything, anything any core networks or any software. It'll just work like all of your software does today. Terminals need to be easy to install. And most importantly, you need global availability. Because all fiber plants, all cable plants, they end somewhere. You've heard the term outside plant or outside the footprint. We want to make sure everybody, no matter where they are, can have access, equal access to the high-speed internet that we enjoy and our children enjoy. So who will buy this and how will they use it? Direct to consumer. A small terminal, easily installed on the side of a house or on a school or a health center. We're targeting 1 billion subscribers by 2025. Cellular backhaul. There's 7.5 million cell towers today that are still 2G. They don't have the backhaul. No one thinks about the backhaul when they talk about 3G and LTE or 5G. But we're going to help to upgrade those cell towers from 2G into 5G world. And when we're going to deploy millions of 5G small cells, they'll all need backhaul. And OneWeb will be the unsung hero behind that 5G signal that you get. It will allow these backhaul, these, these small cells to be deployed in places that you would never have thought, and self-deployed. Another big market, an interesting market, of course, is the connected car. As we move to autonomous vehicles, as you have your car take you to work, and your children are watching a movie in the back, and you may want to do video conferencing, or you may want to download and upload big files or work on a CAD program, you'll be able to have as much bandwidth in your car anywhere in the world that you go as you do in your office or in your home. So this is the system we're building to enable this global high-speed mobile internet. Of course, we'll have aircraft and trains and maritime uses, but this system one of the things that we can't, we can't forget, and the mission that brings us all together, is the ability to really connect all of the schools of the world. To ensure everyone has equal access, and through great investors and through Masa's long-term vision and thought, which I think I thank you and our team thanks you, and the world really is going to benefit from, is your help in enabling, enabling OneWeb to, to make this happen. So thank you. <clears throat>